welcome to another episode of Lucky Time Explosion. Wow. Pew, 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 pew. Karate chop. Yeah, happy Monday. We're back in the saddle. How are you doing today? I'm doing nice. Nice, nice. We got some art news for you guys coming up, uh, as well as some days of the week. Thanks for joining us again. Before we get into it, though, quick word from our sponsor, Sola Studio, without of which none of this would be possible. I wouldn't have even been born. <laughs> we do podcast recording. We do um, fine art printing, framing, any service you need. And we have a really unique uh, membership. So check that out if you're an artist in the city or if you know any artist in New York City, bring them on over. All right. And with that, we should get into the art news for the day. Mm, so what is spicy in the world of art? Well, we've got some interesting headlines. Uh, first of all, another climate activist. Mm. So we've got another uh, person, I believe, in France coming up to a Monet and slapping a giant uh, sticker of like a barren wasteland onto this Monet painting, gluing themselves to the wall as typical. Uh, and, you know, it's just more of this, which is an in what do you think about that stuff? Like, what do, you, what do you think about the climate activists gluing their hands to galleries? Me personally, I think it's ridiculous. I hate it. <laughs> I think it's stupid. At first, I, when I first watched that, I thought mm. she smeared some meat. Meat? Like a slice of meat that she put on Monet. It did look kind of like a cold cut, huh? Yeah. 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 Um, I think it's ridiculous. I think that's that's got to stop. Yeah. I think, I think they should put be put in jail for the rest of their lives <laughs> okay. or executed. Oh, okay. We sound like Trump or Duarte now. Well, you know. <laughs> No, I think that uh, I think that uh, they don't know the difference between oil paint and petrol oil. Clearly, <laughs> it's the war on oil painting. Womp, womp, womp. Now, I get the idea. A lot of these museums like do have fun. They need funding from somewhere, right? So a lot of times they're going to look to a corporate partner, especially one that has a lot of money to spend. Maybe one that wants to zhuzh up their image a little bit with the mm, public, right? Uh, something like BP. Maybe British Petroleum, who famously a while ago was uh, pressured, or the Tate Museum was pressured into divesting from BP. So there was, I don't know if you remember uh, Reverend Billy and the Stop Shopping Choir. I don't. You don't Explain. know about this? No. Oh, gonna, it's great, great. No. Great local New York uh, performance artist. Uh, there's someone called Reverend Billy, and he's like a preacher character, uh, and he's preaching the message of Stop Shopping. So he's like an anti, kind of like anti, I wouldn't even say capitalist, more like anti-consumer culture kind of mm. dude. Uh, and he was case kicked out of like all Starbucks. He's kicked out of like all of these different Disney stores in Union Square uh, and in Times Square and all this stuff. So he's just got, running around annoying the shit out of people. Sort of. He has a choir called the Stop Shopping Choir, and they just preach about, you know, anti-consumer stuff uh, and, you know, bad business practices. Like, they're kicked out of Disney So they Times go Square. there and they start to sing. Yeah, and they sing about, like, how Disney uses child labor to make their toys and things like that. Right. And, and yeah, so he's pretty cool if you don't know about Reverend Billy. But there was a big performance, a big thing, where Reverend Billy, like, was baptizing himself in oil at the Tate. Nice. And, like, so he had all his followers, like, walking behind him very religiously. So imagine like he's like walking very slowly and purposefully towards this giant BP display. All of his uh, uh, followers like behind him like wallowing in oil themselves. And then he just like consecrated the museum with like in oil. And it was this big deal. And a lot of people besides Reverend Billy were bringing attention to it. And the Tate ended up divesting in BP and getting rid of BP as like a, you know, a partner. And now the director of the Tate uh, is calling on the British Museum to do the same. So I don't know when Tate director Maria Balshar started um, there, but I can only imagine she was kind of instrumental in this transition and not the person who initially hooked up the relationship with BP, because that would be a little hypocritical if she then turns around and goes wagging her finger at the British Museum. Uh, I'm not saying that's the case, of course, but that's an interesting thing going on. So now the Tate is pressuring the British Museum to also divest from BP, which I think will be a harder order because BP is, you know, they both have the B in their name. Yeah. <clears throat> the British. They're both British. It's a big problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, God. Send me to the moon. <laughs> so that's what's going on with the British Museum, with uh, BP and the Tate, and, and these climate activists who just won't stop. And, like, listen, I really want to make sure that people know, of course I care about the environment. Of course I, I think that, you know, looking to renewable energy is, is the way to go. We need to make some, some action on this. I just think their targeting is off. 
I get it that like the museum is like a cultural place, you know, of maybe, reverence. Maybe it's a big promotion for Crazy Glue. <laughs> yeah, that maybe might. it's really like crazy <laughs> glue is behind this whole thing they're like we're gonna set you up who cares about the message but when you go to glue your hand to the wall make sure you hold <laughs> up that iconic green and clear crazy glue bottle let everyone know say crazy glue and then do that <laughs> yeah you know, might great be, marketing you might be right Epic. um <laughs> i definitely thought for a long time like uh, this is me being like conspiracy brained i got those you know worms in my brain like but, a RFK? Not, not like the actual literal worm they found in RFK. <laughs> That's a dis- that was a disturbing situation. My favorite joke about that was that his brain was so toxic that the worm died. You know, because he was yeah, dead. He well, wasn't alive. The I parasite. think it got into his, uh, his esophagus because he talked like this. That's something else. That's and something if there's else. one thing I can really uh-huh. tell you. I know it's hard to listen to, but it's, uh, it's definitely, I feel bad for him for that. Imagine yeah, him giving the state of the nation. Yeah. It would yeah, be, it'd it'd be, be kind of tough. tough. It would be tough. It would be tough. Sorry, RFK. I'm like nothing personal against you. But come on, really? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're terrible. We're canceled. I, 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 Show's I, I, over. <laughs> I get no, worse it, like that too when I get sick. In other, no, you're not gonna, I don't think you're going to get anybody upset in art circles for making fun of RFK Thank too God. much. But um, JFK Jr. maybe. Don't Watch out for that. Don't uh, make fun of him. No. Uh, other news in, in art. We have a Basquiat. Again, may breaking a record. We have a two twelve point six million dollar sale through Phillips of uh, Basquiat work. So mm. it keeps going, you know, just keeps going. Uh, I personally kind of am like over. Like I love Basquiat. Obviously, I've got a tattoo on my hand. But after working in the arts for the last decade or more in the city and in the neighborhoods where Keith Haring and Basquiat were active, and Andy Warhol and everything. I'm like, are we not ready for a new one yet? You know, it's just like, it, I feel like a lot of these projects that I see and some of the most exciting stuff I get involved with is always tied to either like Warhol or Basquiat or Caring. It's like, we can't get out of, we can't move on. And it's like, how long until we can move on? You know, we're in a Basquiat quagmire. We're in a Basquiat quagmire. Uh, so that's, that's some of the other news though. 12.6 million at Phillips. Just going to show you artists, you know, it's a long game. If you want to be recognized for more than just you know making money while you're alive, then you gotta you know, be dead. Hold out. You gotta hold out. No, yeah, hold out. Well, really? It, it, it's one of those things that like you know people are upset about that, but at the same time, it makes sense to me because I think that it's the nature of artwork. Right. right. right? I mean, I'm designed in a way like I'll never stop. I mean, I have that's I know why I'm on this planet, and that's you know entertaining and creating art. So right. I know that that's gonna be forever. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> well, I I often tell artists, you know, it's like um. Being an artist, especially like a fine artist, quote unquote, is more of an, a compulsion than like an occupation. You know, it's not like you go to art school, get out of art school, get into a gallery, boom, you're the next big thing. Now you're a huge celebrity. Like the people we, you know, hold up and cherish in the art world are often dead, not because we are waiting. It feels like as an artist, you might feel like it's because society's waiting for you to die to take advantage of you. <laughs> but in reality, I think it's just that, you know, it takes hindsight to see how important somebody's work was. You know what I mean? Like Basquiat and during his time in the in the 80s were probably not, I'm sure a lot of people really hyped on him, but I don't think people were probably guessing that it would be this intense for this long. Right, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> They'd be like, they'd be, I'm sure a lot of people thought he was just like a flash in the pan at the time. I was like, this is some garbage that is just popular now. But nope, it's standing the test of time as, yeah, as evidenced by these auction prices. Thousands and thousands of mini Basquiat artists. Right, exactly. Making more Basquiat. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, other sad news, the Philadelphia University Art of Art is closing. They're shutting their doors. What? Why? Well... They're shutting their door. They're shutting their doors because they can't figure out how to make money. I think uh, they can't get that deal with BP, so they're uh, they've lost their accreditation and they've lost their accreditation. I believe because they have made an announcement that they're closing. I, I couldn't find any surprise that they couldn't find any investors. Yeah, I Sad. couldn't. I couldn't figure out how. I couldn't figure out if there was any other reason why they lost their accreditation other than they made an announcement that they were shutting down. And I think that's kind of it. I can't. I can't find anything. Was else that a on bad it. marketing move on their end? <laughs> bad marketing move. I think they were past marketing moves. It seems like they were struggling with uh, money flow, cash flow problems for many years. That's a shame. And just decided eventually to like shut their doors. So one more art school down the drain. Mm. It happens all the time. Can I have to come to New York, kids? Spend twice as much. Yeah. 
<laughs> but twice as good. What do you yeah, think your best yeah. art school in the city is? Oh, that's a good question, especially because I never went to art school. Yeah. I, so I, I went to SUNY Plattsburgh, and that's like a school for people who never really wanted to go to school, yeah. but did. <laughs> and that's the only way I can explain it. What? What? You can't explain it any other way? Because I'm no. having trouble understanding. What do you mean? It's like, it's a, like I guess I'll go to college. Mm. I'll go here. <laughs> Like, you know, <laughs> I see, I see like, you you, like, you know, I'm a doctor. I want to go to Columbia. You know, I, like I want to be a musician. I go to Berkeley. Right. I, I just want a bachelor's degree because so it says there. I did something. It's kind of like going to a I state school, you're saying. Started and finished it. Yeah. Well, I got my associates at the prestigious Orange County Community College mm. in Middletown, New York. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's, it's, it's well known around the world. And, um, and then I got my uh, last diploma at SUNY Plattsburgh. But funny enough, I, I kind of bent the rules. I didn't finish at Plattsburgh. I took my remaining classes at New Paltz because I was like, I have too much anxiety. I can't go back to Plattsburgh. I'm going to have panic attacks. And they're like, all right, all right, don't, don't, you know, pop a, a nut there, Mr. Lapp, and uh, we'll let you <laughs> do what you want. I even got out of taking math. I was like, numbers do not work in my head. They're like, oh, God. And I begged <laughs> them. I'm like, numbers give me anxiety. Like, well, you don't have to do that either, Mr. Lappin. I'm like, wow, what else can I get away with? Just privileged, huh? No, and I got, I had the similar math thing at my school because I'm also a community college advocate and gr not graduate even, but um, I went to a school in Marin County in California for like six years. And I took every single art history class, every art studio practice class, I learned how to edit film on a flat bed with like 16 millimeter Bolex footage. I learned how to do darkroom photography, bronze cast welding, you know, like Jesus all Christ. Stuff. I'm listening to everything that you're saying, and I'm like, I took ballet class. <laughs> I did badminton. Well, they were great, I, but they weren't, they weren't obviously. And so was badminton, bro. But you said Juilliard, uh, <clears throat> that school that I went to, College of Marin, which is in a really affluent area called Marin County, just north of San Francisco. I like to say it's where all the hippies went after they got rich. Uh, which is true. And if you go there, um, you can't like, you can throw a rock from one Tibetan culture shop to the next. And I think the reason is because these people don't understand how a flag is supposed to work. They put them up and then they start fraying. And right. like when they fray, because they're unhymned. So you, they, you know, your prayers go into the wind oh, as your sweet. flag gets unfrayed by the wind. Uh, and they just keep replacing them. So they have new ones. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I, I made a wish uh, to get Zelda too. I, I had a dandelion and yeah. I blew it into the sky. And I wish, you know, they say if the dandelion reaches the sky, reach to bring your wish to Jesus oh. or God or Belial, who happens to be visiting uh, heaven at that time. Anyways, they yeah, go Belial up into the his. skies and they're supposed to grant you your wish. And I had wished that uh, my dad would get me Zelda too. Didn't, didn't happen and never wished for anything again. Gave up on wishing that that very day. He was wow. supposed to come home. God told me. He was like, Morgan, you're, <laughs> I've gotten your little your little fruity little floater. <laughs> your dad's going to bring home a brand new shiny Zelda too. And then he didn't. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> oh, no. D disillusioned with the uh, dandelion yeah. wish system. Well, that's not how the world works, you know. <laughs> What are you going to do? I never wish again. Yeah, we have some local news as well. If you are in the city, check out this venue coming up on June 9th. It's called Purgatory. And there is a show there with um, our lovely regular guest, Andrew Spalding. Uh, Keith Spaulding of Quartz Casino. Yeah, he is a great man. He is a great musician. Where Where is Purgatory? He's again? our Paul Schaefer. Purgatory is on, like, I think it's on Bushwick. Oh. Avenue, like all the way down near the um, near the cemetery. Ooh! So it's actually very cool. It's called Purgatory. It's across the street from the cemetery. It's got big Beetlejuice vibes because of that. Uh, and you go upstairs. It's a really cool spot. I think they um, Andrew was telling me that they used to make tombstones there. That is pretty. They cool. Actually, used to carve up tombstones. Talking about Beetlejuice, how do you feel? What's your feelings on the the new upcoming Beetlejuice too? How you feel about that? Oh, isn't? But they're getting the they're getting. It's already done. They're getting them back, right? The actors. Yeah. It's actually Michael Except Keaton, right? Ex Michael Keaton is back. Uh, Winona Ryder is back. Yeah. No Alec Baldwin, no Gina Davis. And uh, well, no this, the other guy with the red hair right. who unfortunately right, right, right. got in trouble for having certain pictures, I think. Wait, who are you talking about? I the have the father, red hair. The father in Beetlejuice. Oh, really? I the know that actor. The with uh, what's-her-name from... Uh, 
the Canadian actress. I forgot her no, name. I don't know about the scandal. Yeah, he was. I forgot his name. He was also in uh, Howard the Duck. He was the uh, the bad guy in Howard the Duck. And if wow. you've never seen that movie, definitely catch that movie because that is an epic movie. Oh, yeah. you got to do Howard the Duck. Um, but, yeah, they can't use it. He's been canceled like years and years and years and years ago. It was actually no very loosely tangled with... Um, Paul Rubin. It's a weird thing. You can look oh. it up. I forgot the guy's name, but yeah, he he will not be making an appearance in Beetlegeist. Uh, oh well. But the actress that they have playing the young girl is the girl who played um, Wednesday. I forgot her name, and she that actually was Winona Ryder. No. Oh, the oh, show oh you're talking about the yeah. new the show, and yes. she was in Scream, and then she dropped out of Scream because of a comment that a co-actress made about uh, the war happening in the Middle East and um, mm. they all dropped from Scream. Yeah. But we'll that see. That is still happening Fingers as well. Fingers crossed. It's a good movie. Yeah. I hope they don't ruin it. Yeah, me too. It was a, it was a classic. I always felt... Um, I, I like the mom and the Beetlejuice with her like weird sculptures and her like, you know, yeah, interior no, design. Awesome. And that I feel like I'm half of... I'm, I'm half of the Beetlejuice parents. I'm each of them. Like... That dad wanting the the traditional like lodge, you know, he, he was had like his, into birds. Yeah, he had like the bir- the typical sh- stuff, like you know, wood shelves, bird, the little green banker's lamp. I have one of those in my oh, house. Oh, me too, and I, yeah. that's so iconic, and I love that little. I thing. love that iconic style of like you know the dad lounge. I never thought I would, but I also love the mom's like crazy sculpture collection and all that minimalism. The goth, the goth kind of weird vibe. I was kind of a Danny goth DeVito's kid. Danny DeVito is going to be in this one. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Danny DeVito's I'm great. Everything he does guy. is good. Oh my god, that's true. Classic art Danny DeVito character, of course, Ongo Goblosian. Yes. I'm sure everybody knows about that, but if you don't, please please do yourself a favor and Google Ongo Goblosian. It's the funniest sketch about art that I think I've ever seen. He sees the uh, the humidifier. Yeah, it's, the it's air, air conditioner. The air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of typical. We don't know what's going on. You know, when you walk to a gallery these days, you're like, oh, I'm going to bump into some plastic trash. And they're like, careful. That is a $50,000 sculpture meant to there. look like plastic tracks that you might bump into. Yeah. Well, well I the used art's to, working then. I've own, almost done that when I used to work for the art handling company years mm. ago. Uh, there was a bunch of Gavin Brown stuff. Sorry, Gavin Brown. But oh, Gavin um, Brown, I thought yeah. it was garbage, and um, it was <laughs> not. It was just crushed, um, like, cardboard boxes tied with rope. Just Crust, like crusty cardboard it, boxes. Just like throwing it out for, for recycling. They weren't made but, from, like, steel or something? No, they were just cardboard boxes wrapped up in in rope as if it was being thrown out well and they were in crates mm. like you know they were worth they're like by the way they have to really explain to us that this is not garbage that this is an art piece and should not be touched there needs to be like a name for that kind of subgenre of art that's meant to look like garbage that you would just throw hot away. trash hot trash hot trash but hot that's trash. sexy yeah i saw i uh, there was a a piece that was a faithfully reproduced receipt from going into the Grand Canyon for like $15. Uh, and it was framed at the Art Expo Fair when I was there last. Or no, maybe it was, maybe it was actually the Armory show. You know, I, and I went, what? just talking about Grand Canyon quickly, quick yeah, fact. Go for it. One person a month falls over. One person a month? One person a month falls to their deaths. I'm surprised it's not more. Grand Canyon. You ever been? No, have you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't do the whole donkey ride down to the bottom, but I hiked for maybe three hours uh, three hours down, three hours back. That's badass. So it's pretty much like the donkey, which sans donkey. I was the donkey. It was my own. Be your own donkey. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so, anyway, sorry. No, but wait, uh, that was a good. That was a good um, tangent, though. I liked where you were going with that. It's it's weird. It's weird. It's just so sad to like be taking a photograph. Like you you don't, you would think that the person, and that's usually how it happens. They they step too far back like it's ridiculous and you would think that the person taking the photograph is like okay mike (laughs) come on come a little bit don't look back just come over to me and then these people see it and the last thing you see you know your friend like falling like uh uh, the joker Ah. in batman or or what's his name in die hard at the end that's fucked up you know and then they see you like reaching out but it's like too late well like i said in the last episode safety is an illusion everybody a lot of bad stuff happens all the time but i remember now we're talking about the um receipt that i saw at this art fair so it was a receipt right. from going into the Grand Canyon, and it was like I think six thousand dollars or like two thousand dollars, five hundred. It wasn't like crazy priced, but for what it was, it was like under a frame as receipt. And I was looking up the artist, and they were talking about how they like carefully reproduced this receipt, 
And I'm like, I just don't believe you. I was like, I think this and is what just was it literally for? for entry into the Grand Canyon. And it cost? It was like 15 bucks or $5 or And this small. was a piece that was framed. Yeah, but like they said that it was like a faithfully reproduced copy of the receipt. And like how was it verbatim. reproduced? Like, you know, with their own, making their own inks and paper and like carefully, oh carefully God. doing this. I was like, I'm pretty, I mean, if you're this artist and you're at listening, which is like a million and a thousand, hundred one shot in the dark, definitely not listening. But I didn't believe him. I was like, I'm pretty sure you just framed this receipt and then said you like reproduced it. Because why do we do that? Like, why do we go through so much effort to, I feel like I get it. I guess I kind of get it. Like, I do like those bronze garbage bags. Have you seen those? Yeah, they're, they're sexy. That it, it reminds me, the receipt reminds me it of a piece you. that our friend uh, Clown Soldier uh, created where he actually got a ticket for slapping stickers, which is pretty hard to, to get a ticket for. And then he did a few th- cool things to it, but he silkscreened a limited edition, like, blow up of that ticket that he received for oh putting stickers on the new york yeah, but he streets. blew it up then. he blew it up yeah he, and he threw some color on it it, it was cool he, he totally changed it but that was the thing about this one that gonna, got me was that it was it was exact size it was supposed to be like a one-to-one exact reproduction of right. it i'm like why <laughs> just go get another one you know <laughs> just, just print it out just you just frame the receipt art that's hard to understand by morgan lappin yeah and brandon weiskopfer yeah <laughs> there is a trend in recreating things that are ephemeral or trash or stuff that are not visually appealing uh, and kind of turning and taking a lot of craftsmanship and a lot of time to do it. Right. I've seen And then like that's kind things. of the art. Like there's, a, there's like a whole movement and I'm sure it has like an actual name that I just don't know. Yeah. Like marble pillows. I marble kinda, I pillows. I saw some guy just making a marble pillow. Those but are that's beautiful. Di- absolutely. Yeah. That, that's got to be super difficult to do. I mean, that's insane. That's also, though, a very old thing to make, um, like, fooling your eye with marble to look like a very thin veil or, like, having, like, a little bit of those. That's stuff that's been yeah. done since the, the invention of it's marble impressive. sculpture. It's impressive. It's beautiful. It's it's amazing. Have you ever had your hand it. in doing sculpture? No. I've I've tried marble Just, carving. Really? Oh, oh wow. yeah. Oh yeah. That at, at College of Marin. Again, great shout out oh, to that school. Yeah. It's a really great school. It it was um it, it has more facilities than any other junior college or community college in California. It so if you're listening like in California and you want to go to take some good art classes, go to College of Marin because they have a bronze foundry. In what part of California? That's southern, Northern California. Middle, northern. It's just Got it's it. across it's on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge. Cool. It's like what's connecting San Francisco to the Golden Gate Bridge. Awesome. But they had bronze foundry. They had like all this old you know, technology, big, big studios taxidermy? for life drawing. No taxidermy, no taxidermy classes. Taxidermy. By now, maybe, though, I took a materials and techniques class that you taught us how to do egg tempera. Oh, I like eggs? eggs. You want to know something pretty crazy? What? Guess what? I do want to know something pretty crazy. We're here to entertain our listeners. It's National Egg Day. Oh, no. It's the National Days. All right. It's National Egg Day, Hold on to your pants, kids. It's the holiday list. What is the roster today? There's not too many good ones. The egg egg one is great. Like, I grew up on eating the eggs. I love eating eggs. What I do is I take a, I can't believe it's not butter, right? And I throw it into the pan, right? And I let that shit burn until it's brown and stinky. And then I throw the egg in, and it gives it this flavor. That's just the greatest thing. (laughs) (laughs) So good. Brown, stinky, burn eggs. It's delicious. It's also Love Conquers All Day. Okay. <laughs> Love Conquers Everything. <laughs> it's also National Chocolate Macaroon Day. Chocolate Macaroon Day? Yeah, and uh-huh. here's a good one. It's like National that. Simp Day. <laughs> That's S-I-M-P. Now, I looked at this, and I see that simp has a few different <laughs> definitions. <laughs> and he- I hope we have some simps. Do we have any simps in the audience? Give, give us a comment. Tell if you simp for me or Morgan. I bet you're simp and firm in this wig. Yeah, no, this is, I'm wearing. So just to let you know the uh, origin, supposedly it was originated in 1985 by U.S. rapper Too Short, who used it in its 1985 hit, Pimpology. In the 1980s, it was a word used to describe someone who was overly sympathetic. The term was also used oh. to describe simpletons, people who are considered to be Stupid. Huh. Anyways, you know, through slang and this and that, it changed the definition a little bit. So uh-huh. it basically means in the Urban Dictionary, someone who does way too much for a person they like. Yeah. That's interesting. I actually did not know it was as old as I am. Simp. I thought that word, Opposite I thought that was a, a newer pimp. word. 
Yeah, opposite of a pimp. Opposite of the pimp. Um, here's a weird one. Wait, I have to I have to talk about that because I really thought that simp was like a way newer invention. Like I thought that it came out of um, the proliferation of like OnlyFans and uh, women being more sexually free on the internet. And then you know, then all these dudes dogpiling in. I really thought it was new. I did not know it so came like from a, a nineteen eighty five hip hop song. That's fucking like crazy. I've met ladies in the past who have told me that they are financial dominatrixes. The uh, fin dom. Fin dom. Yep. Now, which is absolutely insane. Like if I can find a guy that would or a lady or anybody, basically <laughs> they get off on the other person using their credit card and finances to a ridiculous point. I'm talking like basic, you name, it doesn't really matter. They get they off on clear providing. They the whole fucking, I don't even know how serious they they'll get, allow it. They get, they get off on providing um, their sugar babies with, with the stuff they demand, no matter, you know. I actually have a friend, I won't name her, uh, she was in San Francisco doing this kind of work. So she would go with this dude uh, like once a week, they would get in her car. They'd barely talk. She would just be really mean to him. That's what he liked. So he'd be really mean to him. And then they would drive around the shopping <laughs> district and she would drag him into like Gucci and all these big stores and make him spend like 2K at each door. Jeez. And then uh, afterwards, you know, she would like step on his balls with a uh, high heel, uh, get paid for that as well, and go home. Uh, and, you know, that's sad to me. <laughs> I think I'm that's looking- really sad. It's like, what are you missing in your life when you just want to be abused? I guess it's a, f- a feeling of like, I can only, if I'm trying to put myself in that but person's some people, shoes. people, that's the only way they can get off. Right. But I'm Which is to, very specific like, and why? strange. Like, I, why? I'll though? never understand. I think but. if you try to, try to understand, try to put yourself in that guy's shoes. I feel like <laughs> it must be because you feel like you get like sucked up to everywhere else. You know, if you're like super rich, you dress nice, you have a good car, you walk around, you got a good job. Like, I bet you it's probably just because it wants the um, human emotion of having somebody be, you know, if nobody's ever mean Simple to you. Simple explanation. His brain is broken. <laughs> too it's, much good it's, stuff. It's, too, you can have too much of a good thing, I guess, which like money is one of those. I guess so. But, you know. Here's an interesting one. It's World Bicycle Day. I want to ride a bicycle. It's my bicycle, not my a bicycle. bicycle. Get your queen worst. lyrics right. That's a kind of a boring one. I love bicycles, though. Bikes are great. And also, last but not least, World Cider Day. Also slightly boring. Ooh. Gives me heartburn. No, just like any cider or alcoholic cider? Um, You know what? Gather your friends, pour a few pints, and enjoy the familiar Christmas. Crispness. Crips. <laughs> Join the Crips and drink cider. Uh, that's, that's all they're doing. That's what it says. Verbatim. They're just drinking cider at the family. You know, yeah, it's a hanging out. thing. That's a community organization. It's a beautiful thing. That's true. Yeah. Anyway, we got about a minute left. I want to thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for watching. Uh, we're continuing to grow the channel. So if you are enjoying these, if you're interested in helping us do this, we do have a Patreon uh, that we are uploading and waiting to get more people on so that we can start giving you guys stuff like T-shirts and pins and And if and you have goodies. not subscribed... Yeah, most people watch watching this show, will not be subscribed. If you've watched subscribe. it all the way through to this point, then give us a give us a sub, give us a like if you want. Be nice. Uh, if you think the show sucks, let us know why in the comments. And yeah. uh, we're looking forward to making more of these. Thank and, you again. And for also, joining don't us. forget to listen to us on Spotify, right? Apple Music, yeah. iHeartRadio. Yeah, does anyone I listen to iHeartRadio? Radio, but that's for our fart specials. We're on the fart radio now? Well, that's the late night show where we get together and, and eat some beans and, and, you know, let out the juice, you know? <laughs> but that's fart You just gave radio. me a good merch idea. We should buy a bunch of those old yak backs and just, like, program them with your, your voice and then sell them as uh, Lucky Time Explosion fart machines. This is the future, people. Yeah. Stay tuned for the next Lucky Time Explosion. All right, we're getting out of here. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us, and have a lovely rest of the week. We'll see you on Wednesday. Bye.